Hi guys and welcome back to JavaScript Playground. In today's video, we will talk about how to select HTML elements using JavaScript. So unlike CSS, we cannot just do a hash ID name in JavaScript. Instead, JavaScript provides us with an HTML DOM method called getElementById. It accepts an ID string and returns the HTML element with ID matching that string. Let's give it a try. So we've got this HTML file. So let's quickly create a JavaScript file as well. So index.js, let's import it. So type is text and JavaScript. Let's give it a source URL, so forward slash and index JS. Let's write a console statement here. So console log script loaded. So just to verify whether our script is loaded or not. So coming here, inspect, moving to console, and we've got this script loaded printed here. So that means the index.js file is loaded. All right. So let's try selecting our HTML element. So as I just mentioned, this get element by ID is a DOM method. And to access DOM, we can use this document variable, which is available in JavaScript. So document dot get element by ID. Because this is a method, so we need parentheses. And to pass arguments, we can simply pass it here. So let's see. Let's try selecting the stop bar. So we've already got an ID here. So let's pass it. Let's try printing it in the console. So console log. Let's save it. So coming back here and it's giving us null. So let's see why. So what's happening here is this script is being loaded and this statement is executed even before the document object tree is created. So what we can do is we can move it to the end of the file. So right before we close our HTML body, we'll discuss more about this later. Let's save it. So coming here. And now, as you can see, this header element is printed in the console. All right, let's do a quick recap. So what we did was we needed to use this get element by ID of method. And this method is a part of the DOM. So that's why we had to use this document variable, which, give, which gives us access to all the DOM methods and attributes. So document.getElementById, so we got access to this method. And this method, it, it accepts an argument. And this argument can be ID of any HTML element that you want to select. So in our case, we selected the top bar. Let's say we wanted to select this logo. So let's copy this and paste it here. Let's save it. So now, as you can see, we're getting this HTML element with ID logo. So that's how we can use get element by ID to select HTML elements. Similarly, if we pass an ID which is not present in this current web page, so let's say logo test, let's save it, and it returns null. All right. And that's why we were getting this uh, null earlier because the elements weren't loaded in the document tree. And when we try to do get element by ID, it couldn't find those elements. And that's why it returned null. All right, so we tried selecting an element by ID. Now let's try selecting some elements by class. So for that, we have another method called get elements by class. So as the name suggests, it accepts a class string and returns all the HTML elements with class matching that string. So let's give it a try. So again, because this is a DOM method, so we need to use this variable. So document dot get elements by class name. Now this will require a class. So let's give it one. So let's say this block card. Let's paste it here and let's print it in the console. Sorry. So console log, let's save it. 
And as you can see, we're getting a list of three items because we have three block cards. And this result is very different from this HTML element that we got from get element by ID. So get element by ID gives you the HTML element itself. But when you do get elements by class, so it returns you this HTML collection object. So let's see what this object contains. It has a lot of key value pairs. This object contains everything about the HTML element. So as you can see here, we've got the class name, we've got the height, we've got the width. Similarly, we've got the content. So as you can see here, learn these programming languages and stuff, stuff, stuff. And when I hover here, on this inner HTML attribute, it shows everything inside that element. So in our case, we've got this image tag, an H3 tag, and a paragraph tag. So even when you check your HTML code, so inside this uh, blog card element, you've got the image tag, the H3 tag, and the paragraph tag. All right, remember this. We'll talk about this in the coming videos. If you scroll more, so as you can see here, there are some properties which start from on. So on something, so these are all events. So if you see here, we've got on click, we've got on double click, on drag, on scroll, etc., etc. So these are all events. And we can use these events to trigger some, uh, to trigger some functions. Say for example, on click, you want to show an element or on click, you want to hide an element. And all these things can be done by using these events and these key value pairs. So the keys are called HTML DOM properties. We will learn all about the major properties in the coming videos. All right, so we've tried selecting HTML elements by ID, by class. We can also select them by the HTML tag itself. So for that, we have another DOM method called get elements by tag name. So again, as the name suggests, it accepts a tag string and returns the HTML elements matching the tag. Let's try an example. So coming here, let's comment this. So console log document dot get elements by tag name. So let's say we want all the image tags. So we would simply write IMG, not angle brackets, just the name of the tag. Let's save it. And as you can see, we've got these image items now. Similarly, say we wanted to select all the paragraph tags, so we could do just P. Let's save it. And as you can see, we've got all the paragraph tags. Similarly, say we wanted to select all the H3 tags, so we could simply write H3. And as you can see, we've got all the, all the H3 tags. And that's all for today. 